Ethiopia and the cities and the suburbs. I think Kofi Annan was the, was the president of uh, Asia, the country that's in power, South Africa. In the African Union, I know there's some countries that are not part of the African Union, but I don't know how many. Yeah. So according to my guess, let me give it 50. But then there are four countries that are not in the AU. With the East African passport, the yeah. one that we have, yeah. we have access to six countries, yeah. right? Yeah. So which means like traveling would be very yeah. easy. I mean, I have, but I don't know. <laughs> you've heard about the agenda, and you've heard about 20. No, I've never heard about it. Ah, but I've but just heard about it. Uh, like, 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 no know, agenda. Like, yes. It's okay. You I've heard of it. No, but we're asking about agenda 2060. <laughs> Ushindi kwa ukombo si wetu Tujitowe wenye wetu si mame kwa moja Ulinda uhuru na umoja wetu What you've just heard is the African Union anthem performed in Swahili that gives us a clue into what we're going to discuss for this episode of Africa 101. As you can imagine, the mood in 1963, there's the backdrop of the Cold War happening between Russia and the United States. When the African continent, the independent African nations came together to form an organization of African unity. At the very core of this organization was uniting the African continent. And one obstacle to uniting this African continent was, of course, the fact that most African nations were not independent. Africans were living under foreign dictatorship. It is with this backdrop that uh, leaders such as Haile Selassie and Kwame Nkrumah came together with other African leaders to say, how can we help in this situation? The OAU established a liberation committee which was solely responsible for providing material support to the liberation struggles across the continent from Guinea-Bissau to Mozambique to South Africa so that these nations could themselves one day become independent determined our own fate. The political independence of Africa was a success by the early 2000s and the African Union sought to shift its focus to issues of greater concern, including integration to develop the African continent. Colonialism per se was not about political power. It was about economic power. It was about siphoning out the raw materials to feed into the industries of the West. Africa's trade networks had been decimated by the colonial incursion. Now there were new borders on the continent. These borders presented new challenges. The African Union was best positioned to overcome these challenges by unifying the African continent. So in our video, we will explore how the African Union aims to restore the position of the motherland. After almost 500 years of imperialist education, the African continent is now in a position to control its own fate. Now that most African nations have attained political independence, in this video we will answer the questions about how the African Union aims to extend the independence that the OAU helped to establish on the African continent. We will look into those questions and see what the African Union is doing, what organs it has, and what programs it aims to use to fulfill those promises to the African people. But we will also look into the successes and challenges faces in this ambitious goal of uniting 55 nations across land that is so diverse, politically, economically, socially, and historically. Before we jump into these questions, however, let's keep with the trend of exploring the organization of African unity and how it became the African Union. 
the African Union really started in 2002 when the members of the Organization of African Unity solved that it was time to roll that mandate from the political independence to more pertinent issues. It was all launched in Durban after the dissolution of the Organization of African Unity. The EU has come a long way from its roots in the 1960s when it started as a political liberation struggle. But now it has turned into the biggest unification of countries other than the United Nations. The AU focuses on social and cultural issues across the continent, economic issues, issues of technology, issues of mineral resource management. This brings us to one of the very... The African Union has 14 flagship programs that are aimed at transforming the African continent and the lives of the people on the African continent. These programs are integrated high-speed train networks, the Africa Commodity Strategy, the Continental Free Trade Area, African passport and free movement of people, silencing of the guns, the 42,000 megawatt Great Inga Dam project, and a single air traffic market, an Africa Economic Forum. One of the most important is an integrated financial institutions framework, a pan African e network connecting African citizens across the continent, an Africa outer space strategy, a pan African virtual university, and the cyber security strategy. The most important of these is the Great African Museum. All of these 14 pillars form the Agenda 2060, which honors the founding of the Organization of African Unity by aiming to a fully integrated continental community by the year 2060. Why 2063? Because it is important to honor the, the hard work that went into firstly liberating the continent, paving the way for the continent to be able to determine it. To the many organs and agencies that are responsible for achieving this momentous initiative, of connecting uh, nations, their economies, their cultures, and the people. These organs are aligned to Agenda 2063 and the pillars of Agenda 2063 so as to streamline the effectiveness of the organization. Because you can imagine an organization that hosts 55 nations with a population of 1.2 billion people it requires quite a lot of administration and planning because, again, the continent is massive. Some of these agencies are the African Union Commission, which is headquartered in, the, in, in Addis Ababa, the African Assembly, which is a, a meeting of all of the African heads of state. The members of the Pan-African Parliament are selected by African legislatures across the continent. The Permanent Representatives Council, which is a collection of the different embassies or ambassadors of the African nations in Addis Ababa, and a whole body dedicated to the various foreign ministers from across the, the continent. The African Investment Bank, the African Monetary Fund, and the African Development Bank. The Economic, Social, and Cultural Council. So in this episode, we've already explained a little bit about the African Union, Agenda 2063, the pillars of the Agenda 2063, and the organs of the African Union, and most importantly, the history. Later on, Africa 101 will focus more closely on these various things as and when we get the right information. One of the greatest challenges for the AU has been connecting its activities and programs to regular people on the ground. Most of the African Union's funding comes from external donors, which makes it very difficult for the African Union to focus on its own mandates without outside influence. This gives a rise to many other challenges that the African Union faces. Because the African Union is yet to be able to provide a common public good to Africans across the many nations that form the African Union. We should gauge these failures with a grain of salt, understanding how massive the African continent is and how diverse it is. One other thing that is a challenge for the African Union is giving a voice to the, the 1.2 billion Africans across the continent. These challenges are not only challenges of the African Union, and we should accept it. It is incumbent upon us, the African people, who want to realize this dream of the Africa that we want in 2063, to say, this is the role that I am playing. And that's the role that we are playing here at Africa 101. We are spreading information on the African Union so that the average person can understand what the African Union is, what it does, why it exists, and how it will impact their lives in the future. Everybody who's watching this now, leave your comment to let us know how you are going to follow up on Agenda 2063 
to realize it in your own little way, in your business, in the social programs that you're running for your NGO, in the education that you are pursuing, in anything that you're doing, how are you going to play a meaningful role in realizing Agenda 2063? Because again, let's remember, this is an African agenda and it is incumbent upon you as an African, whether you're in Cape Town, South Africa, or you are in Malindi, in Kenya, or you are in Ouagadougou. How are you playing a meaningful role in realizing this grand vision of growing the African continent? Let's jump into the successes of the African Union. The African Union has been able to enhance African agency on the global stage. Now African nations act in concert. They collaborate and they make decisions as one entity. One other success of the African Union is it has socialized African leaders to embrace liberal and progressive ideas and values in uniting the African continent. The African Union has established uh, quite innovative norms and customs. The AU is slowly building up capacity so that it can achieve this momentous goal of uniting the African continent. This will better prepare Africa to handle the challenges facing ordinary Africans in the future. I look forward to a day when Africans across the continent and in the diaspora capitalize on this capacity that the African Union is building. Agenda 2063 seeks to unite the fragmented nations of the African continent to honor the dream of of Africa's founding fathers to rebuild the continent after centuries of exploitation and subsequent decades of post-colonial instability. Now that Africa has for the most part fought off imperialist agendas on the continent, we need to focus on rebuilding Africa's internal trade networks and positioning the African continent to offer Africans a better life, a life that would make the founders of the OAU proud. In honor of these great liberators, I invite you to join many other Africans across the continent working to transform Africa into the Africa that we want. Where peace and prosperity reign and its peoples rejoice in the spirit of Ubuntu and honoring the values of Ujamaa as envisioned by Nyerere. Let's embrace each other as brothers and sisters working hand in hand to build the Africa that we all want. Zimbabwe. Yeah. Fourteen falls. Nigeria for fourteen falls in in Kenya. Ah, fourteen falls. Fourteen falls. Fourteen Ethiopia, Ethiopia, the big, uh, big, uh, big land of uh, the big land of the, the hub. <laughs> yeah. Ethiopia. You, you want to go to uh, you mean where they the, they have the rastas? Yeah. Sheshamani. 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 Libya. So if you had a friend there right now, uh, if I told you there's a friend in Guinea-Bissau, just book a flight. Yeah. <laughs> Good morning, good morning, good morning. Oh, you, you just. <laughs>